All right, can you guys hear me now? Hello? Good. Not that I need a speaker by you guys. <laughs> but my name is Chris Lotus. I'm with Muddy River Catfishing. You may or may not have heard of us. We have a YouTube channel, and we're from Las Cruces. We fish the Rio Grande River up to Elephant View, along Crystal Lake and South Carolina Lake. And uh, I've just been fishing since I was I was six months old, believe it or not, and it's always been a passion of mine, and I've just kind of learned through the years, and so I'm going to share with you today some of the rigs that I use to catch these catfish. Um, the first rig that I learned to use was the one that my dad taught me. And it's called the Carolina rig. And the Carolina rig, the basic idea is you have your weight up on top and your hook on the bottom. And they will bring plenty of catch with it, but it does have a few drawbacks to it. And it has multi-purpose as well. So the, uh, the rig I have here is a uh, four ounce low roll singer that sinker that slides on the line and then there's a barrel swivel and there's a leader line here with a circle hook at the end. Now hooks are hooks are always preference. If you if you use a regular hook that's fine. If you like circle hooks uh, that's your preference as well. There's there is a difference when you're using a circle hook versus a regular hook. In a, a regular hook, of course, you see that fish bite, you see your rod doing this, you grab it and you yank on it. You want that hook to penetrate to the mouth and catch them. And that's how you that's how you catch them on a regular hook. Now a circle hook, circle hook's a little different. When you see that fish biting and doing this number, you don't want to you don't want to pull that hook because the shape of the hook has that point pointing in towards the shank. So if you pull it, you'll just pull it right out of the mouth. So what you do is you let that fish run with it, and as he runs, It'll come around the corner of his mouth and it'll hook him all on his own. So all you do is once you see that rod going, you just kind of crank on the reel a little bit and that will help set that hook. You never want to pull it from the circle. So anyways, this is the rig that I learned to fish with. And like I said, it's a pretty good setup. It works great both lakes and rivers. And uh, you're fishing with this, it'll sit on the bottom like so, and your bait obviously is on the bottom, whether it be the river or whether it be the lake. The good thing is since this weight isn't tied to the line, is it'll slide through, and the fish doesn't really feel that weight. So when he's biting, you can see that bite a lot easier than if you had to pull the whole weight. Now, the drawback that I had to this is when I was river fishing with it, I would end up, I'd end up catching catfish, but I'd also end up catching a lot of turtles. And there's a lot of those soft shell turtles out there. And what, what what they do is in the river, because they have that current, they have to they have to use their claws and stuff to hold on to the bottom. So they'll swim up and they'll find this bait and then they can they can grab a hole in the mud or, or the bottom and they can start picking at your bait and then you end up catching turtles because you're fishing right on the bottom. So, after a few years of trial and error and fishing with this rig and realizing that, that I was catching probably an equal amount of turtles that was catfish, I tried to mess it around and came up with this other rig. And this one, This is probably my favorite rig. And I don't necessarily have a name for it. The best I could find is uh, similar to it, but they call it a Kentucky rig. But not really because it's very, it's, it's very, it's a lot more simple than a Kentucky rig. And I'll show you that in a second. But on this rig, You can see the difference. I have a weight on the bottom, 
I have the hook up on top. And the way this works, if you, if you have this line cast it out, your bait's no longer directly on the bottom. Now, some people may think that's a bit of a concern for catfish, but catfish aren't bottom feeders like a lot of these baits. Catfish have a bladder, an air bladder inside that they can fill up with air or let air out as they see fit to sit anywhere in the water column that the bait fish are at. Because they, they mainly feed on bait fish. They can feed on other stuff, but once they get bigger, they mainly feed on bait fish. So, so if you're fishing in the lake, now your, now your hook's just a little bit off the bottom. You're not having to worry about getting stuck on rocks and stuff like that. And if you're fishing in the river with the current, your, hook, your hook's going to be over here. And now a turtle is going to have a hard time getting to it. You may still catch one depending on how much current there is in the river and whatnot, but just, they're going to struggle now because they've got that big shell and that current's pushing on them. They can't just swim up to it and hang out here while they're eating it. They'll have, have to hold on to something to get to it. And uh, one thing I noticed, you can always tell the difference when a, when a turtle bites than to when a catfish bites. And when a catfish will bite it, if it's a little one, just a little thing like that, kind of pulls it like that a little bit. But if it's a big one, you'll grab it and then you'll, you just kind of want to run with it go like that. In my experience, I've actually gotten in the water and swam in this fish and I studied them. And channels and blue cats swim, they swim in schools. And as they're going, they usually normally go up river and when they find a bait, they grab it and they go downstream because they want to get that bait and get away from the rest of them so that the other fish don't take it away from them. So if you're fishing downstream, they're going to bite this bait, and they're going to take off. And that's why you're going to, you're going to get that big bite. Now, if you, if you ever go to the river and you fish upstream, you cast upstream with you, all of a sudden you see your bait, your line kind of goes loose a little bit, and you don't know if it's the current that kind of moved your bait or what. The problem you have in there is these catfish are biting and moving downstream. So your line's going slack. You're not sure exactly what's going on. So me, I don't ever, well, I rarely ever fish upstream because it's a lot easier to tell when you fish are biting if you're fishing downstream. You have to really, really, really pay attention to your line when you're fishing upstream so you know that it's either the fish that's biting or it's the current that's moving your bait. Now, the, the one thing about this setup that I really like, and I'll show you how to tie it, is I, I designed this, I designed this setup to, uh, to kind of park if you're fishing heavy areas, but heavy cover areas. And uh, one of the one of the uh, one of the big places that you're gonna find these one of the main places that you're gonna find these big fish, these big flatheads. Yes, sir. I cut, I cut my lines. So, but I'm, I'm going to show you how to tie this line, how to tie this rig. But one of the places that you're going to find these big catfish are in heavy cover areas, whether it be rocky areas or a bunch of fallen tree branches, log jams, stuff like that. The problem you have fishing those areas is getting stuck. So, what I've done is I tie a loose, a, a loose or, a, or a simple knot on the bottom and the way this works, it's going to be a little hard for you guys to see, but yeah. Let me, uh, so all I'm doing is I'm making a, I'm making a, a knot. I'm making a knot on the tag line end. That, that goes around the main line. So the main line threads through here and just a loose knot on here around the main line. 
You can see that. So, so what you do is you, you just pull this tight, like this, takes a little knot on the line, and then you pull this, and that's strong enough to hold the weight. And that's really all you need is to get your, your bait down where you want it. Yeah. Now, now when I, when I tie this, I tie this to What I do is I come up, and then this depends on where you want your, your bait in the water, but usually I'll fish about, about this far up, and I make a loop. Make a loop. I thread it through. Well, this line is the one that's going to take the most of the beating. 
whether it be the fish biting and their teeth are rubbing it or you're dragging it through the rocks or something. So it's easier to just cut this line and put a new one. Or if you get stuck, this line is more likely to break than the line up here. That way you just have to put a new hook on. You don't have to worry about re-rigging all of this and, or losing your weight and your hook. So, one of the things that these guys do is they'll take, they'll take this rig and they'll drop it behind the boat and they'll cast it out 100 feet or more or less, depending, and they'll, they'll drag it behind the boat and they'll go real slow about 0.5 mile an hour, half a mile an hour, and just dragging this bait along the bottom. And, and what happens is you're covering more area. You're bringing this bait around to the fish instead of waiting for the fish to come to your bait. So you, you're dragging this around, catfish sees it, he'll swim right up to it, he hits it, and he, he takes off with it, and your rod just goes down like that. And you know you got a fish. Uh, the problem I've had with the Carolina rig dragging it is that it does tend to get stuck because of the wedge shape of the fishing weight. So another thing that you can do is you can do what they call a suspended rig. And that is pretty much just what it sounds like. If you suspend your bait right off the bottom or wherever you, if you have a depth finder and you can see where the fish are at, you suspend it at that depth. Now the reason for this heavy weight is, number one, if you're fishing in, in current in the river, you want, you want something heavy enough to keep your bait there. But if you're fishing with this technique in the lake, your, your boat is moving at half a mile an hour, so you, you want your, your bait to be pretty much straight down with the boat. You get a lighter weight if you drag it through the water over here. This way you have control of where your bait is. Drop it down. If they're 20 feet down and you're in the 50 feet of water, you can, you can uh, estimate where 20 feet is and drop it straight down. And you drag it and you just cruise around the lake looking for these fish. Just like you would walleye, I mean uh, white bass or, or uh, striper. When they hit, they pull it down and they're hooked with a circle hook. Now another rig that works for this type of fishing is uh, it's, this one here is very similar to the Carolina rig, but they call this a Santee Cooper rig. And the, the main difference that you can see is there's a float on this. Now, if you're fishing with this setup, you can use it. You can use this whether you're whether you're drift fishing or if you're just bank fishing. If you're if you're fishing with this setup, this peg float here allows your bait to float up off the bottom. So that keeps it off. Now, now you don't have to worry about turtles like we were talking about. Or you can keep it off the bottom where it's not getting stuck. Or you can let more line out and let it float up higher, however high you want it to be. So this is a good setup for fishing different depths of the water. If you guys have ever been fishing and you accidentally catch a catfish on a lure, you're fishing with a rattle trap, or you're fishing with a spinner bait, or you're bumping a worm along. That's exactly why. It wasn't, a, it wasn't an accident. These guys are predators. They're looking for something swimming by. They're looking, they're looking to feed, and they're ready to attack. And that's why they're caught on lures quite often. If you look at the flathead catfish, the flathead catfish, their bottom jaw sticks out more than their top jaw. So they're like this. Their eyes are a little bit up on top of their head like this. The reason for that is because if you've ever seen it, a black bass that mounts the same, they're predator fish. Now another thing that they have 
Have you ever heard the saying, you know, the shark in the water, or so they can smell fear and all that stuff? Well, there is there is some truth to that. These catfish, they have a line down their body. If you've ever noticed, it's a distinct line. It's called the lateral line. Yeah, it's called the lateral line, and with that line, they can sense vibration in the water. So whether if there's a fish in distress or there's other fish that are eating, they can sense that vibration, and they'll come to that area. What's going on? The other thing that they have is their entire body is covered with something called chemoreceptor. And a chemoreceptor is a fancy name for a taste bud, basically. So their entire body is covered with taste buds. So you can, you can put a bait on, throw it out, this fish can swim right by it, taste it just by swimming next to it, or touching it with its tail, and decide whether he likes it or not. Then turn around and come and eat it. So that, so that's that's how why these fish are ultimate predators. They have all these abilities.